another one, one more at least. Mm. A few more films to go on to. One, one more, at least two. Can I ask a question about the production design? Uh, that would be me. That would be you. <laughs> um, well, could you just tell us a little bit about the experience, budget, time frame, how, uh, how you budget? Budget. The whole thing was rather ambiguous, to be honest, uh, from start to finish. I mean, we. we I, ha I was in an unusual position that I, that I was extremely aware of where the project started and um, of where we wanted it to go. Uh, that, that, that isn't normal for most production designers. Um, so for myself, uh, on a creative level, I was extremely aware of, of what my vision was for it. And um, as I was partly a writer on it, I had clear vision about where we were going to go with it, which is half the battle, to be honest. Um, in terms of, I mean, I took on Tom's Not Here Tonight, who's a fantastic art director and Sarah as well. Um, half the battle of being able to put together uh, production design is, is the people that you work with. And whether they're able to um, put into a process the, the, the vision that you have for film, um, which they did fantastically, didn't they? I mean, they did a fantastic job. Yeah, they did. Mm, yeah. Um, um, and it was a long, arduous process. Um, we often, I mean, more than not because the budget was so low as well. I mean, that was the hardest part of it, is that we were asking so much of people. Um, we did go to a lot of the local shops, um, um, in Marple Bridge and Marple to ask, just to give for free some of their um, furniture and there were so many things. <laughs> we're in debt to everybody, yes. you know. We owe thousands of pounds. Joking. Okay. It really was, I can honestly say, it's something that can't be repeated really. Um, it's a one-off and it can't happen again. That we ask people to really give so much of their time um, um, and like I said, the, the locals were just fantastic, weren't they? Mm -hmm. And yeah. businesses that were born. And just, just quickly, um, I'd just like to say that um, Mrs. Stepcorn's Magical room, Reading Room, um, being 25 minute um, uh, short film, um, we spent £31,500 to make what you saw on the screen. Okay, the projector wasn't that good, and if you've been a BAFTA, it would look amazing. Uh, on a big cinema screen, it was absolutely stunning. Um, we shot on red camera, which is uh, you know, a digital format, uh, but we aimed to produce something that was very filmic. Um, and the film was uh, featured in you know, several online magazines and variety in LA and UK. Uh, as, again, as I said, you know, everybody that spent their time and donated their time uh, to Mrs. Peppercorn um, did so because they believed in what we were trying to achieve. Uh, but the actual hypothetical budget uh, in dollars is over one million and in pounds is 748,000 pounds that we should have spent on making uh, what you saw on the screen. Um, so I urge you to buy the DVD and the Blu-ray right now. <laughs> it's not for sale, uh, but you know, if it was for sale, you know, it, it would cost a considerable amount of money to make. Uh, we wanted to achieve something that the viewer, the audience, uh, would really love to see. Um, and in times of strife, you still live in the Marble Bridge, though. Yeah. No, no, we, we bought a condo in LA. <laughs> okay. You know, we went in. Somebody emailed me the other day and said, "I understand that you sold the script." <laughs> We have a feature, we have a feature, feature film script of Mr. Peppercorn. Um, it's a trilogy, by the way. Um, and someone said that they, they thought we'd, we sold it to one of us for $40 million. So I, I wouldn't be emailing you back if I earned $40 million. You know, it's bizarre. You know, it's just, but it's crazy. You know, I, I signed with a management company in LA um, off the back of um, what they saw in, in Mr. Peppercorn. You know, if you want to make something um, as a director, if you're a director here um, and you want to be um, seen as a commercially viable director, then you have to create something that's commercially viable. You know, there, are, there are considerable amount of directors out there that make amazing stuff, you know, have great on screen talent, but the, the, the actual subject matter that they're actually trying to direct 
uh, isn't commercially viable and they fall to the wayside. Um, you know, there's a guy called David Hibbon who, um, who did the animation sequences in Harry Potter and all he did was create animation sequences. So the latest Harry Potter sequence, uh, in, sorry, the Harry Potter film, um, he made this little animation sequence um, and that actually enabled him to become uh, the next director on the new feature uh, pan film. And, and he hasn't directed anything, but it's just what you're actually capable of doing. Can we just say that, that the Britain has so much talent, yes. we really do. Yeah. And um, yeah. 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 Um, and American, the Americans especially, don't they, um, draw on that talent all of the time. And it's really... And I think the north of England has more talent <laughs> than the south of England. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I'll tell you what, on that note, we've got two more to get in and two special pieces which you should stay for, but okay. go to the bar. Okay. Show some more, please. Thank you.